Hello everyone, apologies for the slightly delayed start, last minute technical difficulties on my computer. Apologies for that, a quick insight error. engineering rolled followed by daring engineering and I was able to get things operational in time to actually have a story. So, um, yeah. yes. Uh, so just to keep things as consistent as possible, I'm currently hoping that our, we will be going on this so yeah. after today there will be hopefully two more sessions of Star Trek Adventures Nighthawk uh, the season slash possible series finale will be on June the 25th after that this group will break for the summer and decide what we want to do next whether it's continue this mission this particular Starship crew start a new Starship crew go to a different system or just devolve into cannibalism we're not sure yet but we'll figure it all out so I believe that the captain has a log for the day. That I do, buddy. Captain's log, start date 83391.1, May 23rd, 2406. My request for the transfer of our previous Akashi prisoner has been indeed approved. Both Starfleet Intelligence and myself have reiterated to him the terms of this arrangement and the consequences that will follow if he breaks these terms. For the duration of his mission, a stripped version of one of the two Type XX shuttlecraft has been provided. Commander Bashir has been released from the caring, supple hands of Dr. Koax. His debriefing was filled with information. Uh, maybe a little bit too much information. <laughs> Director Chalmers has asked us to take a detour back into the Badlands. Rumors of a Zenkethi listening post has gotten the director's attention, and if it exists, we'll install a covert signal tap so, Star so Starfleet can monitor future communications. End log. Alright. So, you are all on the bridge of the Nighthawk, as the GM has realized that he hasn't actually got his own Roll20 instance loaded up yet. Let's rectify that. So, our first scene, I believe, uh, is going to be with the USS Nighthawk flying towards the Badlands, which exists at the uh, clumsy intersection between Federation space, Cardassian space, and Zenkethi space. Uh, it's going to be a couple days before you guys actually arrive on site, which will give some people some time to catch up on personal affairs. And I believe Mr. Helsing has one that he would like to take care of. Roger, I need to um, get a message out to my sister. Of course. So the whatever the quickest method of communication. Okay. Uh, thankfully, you are fairly close to the USS Orion. They're still in the, the border around Zenkethi, or not Tholian space. So a quick subspace communication would be the quickest way to get a message to her. Go ahead and do that. Put the page out to her. Alright. As soon as I get your character tokens. There you are. Uh, why are you not showing up? I have Mr. Helsing. Your token is there. Why are you not here? No squall protocol is, act is activated. Mm -hmm. Well, while we figure out why your token's not appearing, uh, what would you like to say in the message? <laughs> For Shan, what? Um, just testing. Just one. Let Kaylin know that to be very wary of anybody coming up to her pretending to be me or she thinks might be me that we need to establish a um, form of greeting that neither one of us would normally use and I'm working on that with a, a um, password countersign okay. type thing something that I would not think of myself and something she would not think of herself ah very sneaky coming up with a password that neither of you know splendid no, I get what you're saying. And well, we will know it once we're told it, but mirror me would not. Right. 
And mirror her while mirror her is dead. I, I think one of you should dab and the other one should floss. <laughs> no? It could work. I d I'm Don't not ever think of that. I'm not entirely sure why good uh, facial and oral hygiene is a good I guess, password, but you know. Who would ever guess it? Oh, gosh. <laughs> anyone born in the last t well, who, anyone about 12, 13 years old? Well, not not in uh, current Star Trek time. I know, I know. <laughs> uh, ancient historians. Yeah. yeah. With that, I'd be off to go see the Binars. Ah. To help come up with a quick pass password countersign. Okay, it's not uh, too difficult to come up with something very much similar to the public-private key generation of passwords that are used in today's era of encryption where both you and her have a unique identifier only known only to yourself and anyone who wishes to talk to you will or has a public key so a decryption meth, um, method and then they will t talk back and forth in that Using those, uh, using those manners. Um, similar type thing for in-person contact. Yeah. Uh, spoken word and then a gesture. Mm-hmm. Set that. Update all tokens. Let's see if... Oh, now they're all showing up. What the heck? God, uh, there's too many me's. You and all the other mirrors. Okay, at least you have a token. Not sure where the gold border went, but we'll fix that in post. Spoiler alert, no I won't. Okay. I feel like Doctor Strange for a moment from Endgame. Yes. Okay, uh, so Kaylin acknowledges the passwords back and forth. Uh, she's, she ju or she um, teases you a bit that you've always been a little paranoid, but this is this getting a little much? When you're out trying out trying to beat yourself you gotta start thinking outside the box I'll explain more when we're in person alright we'll see you later bro take care okay so we have does anyone have anything else they'd like to do over the next day or so I do I'd like to uh, have a scene in the holodeck ah do I have to break out one of my accents? No. Oh, good. D and <laughs> Not not this time. Okay. But I mean, if we if we don't get a uh, if we don't get a fourth season, then you might need, you might need. To... Okay. We are now on the holodeck. I'm still voting for six seasons in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's a computer. Can you please display the uh, holographic recreations of the senior stuff? Working. And uh, Bashir, Mr. Helsing, Mr. Thashran, and Lieutenant Vaid all appear in front of you. Go box. Oh yeah, him too. <laughs> Valued member of the team. Team. <laughs> There he is. All right, then. Computer. Access, typically, typically I like not to invade the, uh, the privacy of my staff, but considering that there are mirror versions of them potentially on the loose, I need to dot my I's and cross my T's just to make sure everybody is who they say they are. So computer, based on the information contained within their personal logs and extrapolating from their medical information, are there any psychological differences between any of the personnel listed here? Warning, access of personal logs is uh, prohibited under, Star under Starfleet Mandate 1923 subsection 3. Understood. Override. Command authorization, Sagra Alpha 2. Acknowledged. 
working. Analysis complete. Uh, personnel file or personal logs indicate that there is no 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 ma no major shifts in psychological uh, pro in psychological profiling, with the one exception for Commander Helsing. Commander Helsing's personal logs have shown an increase of 15% in usage of self-deprecating or guilty for or guilty sayings. Well, that's not necessarily too surprising, but I'll let the man be. He could work this out in his own time, and those resources are available to him. In this case, I won't pry into his business. All right, computer, erase memory of, all, of this request. Memory erased. <laughs> all right. Well, at least from just ca a casual glance, it seems like everybody else is relatively who they say they are, but I mean, that's just one aspect of the equation. Computer, open a subspace link. Destination? The U.S. has a black shield. I'd like to talk to Commander Truel. Accessing. USS Black Shield is currently un is currently unavailable. They are running in silent uh, as per director Ch as per orders listed by Director Chalmers. USS Black Shield location unknown. USS Black Shield location or USS Black Shield mission profiles classified. Understood. In any case, I'd like to then send a deep space encrypted communique to Deep Space 15. I'd like to advise Captain Crawford that potentially just be on the lookout for senior staff that may or may not necessarily be who they think they are. I don't necessarily want to completely hint that uh, in the course of my message, I don't want to hint completely that we're dealing with mere universe shenanigans, but I don't want to, I, I just want to say keep it vague enough like, oh, it could be changelings or anybody else. I don't know. Just watch your back, buddy. Message packaged. Message encrypted. Message sent. All right. Well, I'd like to also establish a 24-hour, once every 24-hour uh, bioscan of the rest of the senior staff. If there are any changes, I'd just like them. I'd like to be notified within, an, and I'd like this period to go on for the next three to four days. Call me paranoid, but it is what it is. Acknowledged. Authorized. Command accepted. R to call the captain paranoid. <laughs> I did ask for that, and I do appreciate that. Finally, um, I'd like to remove the rest of the senior staff at holo, pro holo projected images in front of me and I'd like to have a holo replica of myself. Acknowledged. And you are staring at an extremely handsome individual. Well, thanks, computer. You're welcome, paranoid. <laughs> And I just want to leave off the scene staring into my gorgeous eyes. No. Just m contemplating the idea that Commander Helsing didn't mention that the Mirror Universe did have to deal with a director Sengral. So if nobody on my senior staff or the rest of the crew is necessarily in the place of a doppelganger, I like to think, I like to leave the scene off on how. I, how exactly am I supposed to fight myself? All right. If such a such, if such a thing were to come to it. Cool. Meanwhile, we're going to cut to the data lab, where Lieutenant Vaid and Commander Helsing have just been informed by one zero and one one that all of the data has been successfully decrypted from the various data chips that have been supplied during your misadventures on Orion. And you both should have a handout containing the information that you have found. 
Oh man, finally. I'm through a lot for this. Where do you want to start, Lieutenant? You can go first, sir. I mean, the information about uh, Fox has been injured. It kind of fits with um, Isabir said that he was an ambassador. So the Tholian set him up as an ambassador to the Orions in working to, in running illicit arms and goods through both our universe and the mirror universe. And that the whole Tholian assembly considers both the universes to be one. It's probably not just that one. It might be multiple, you might even say a multiverse that they just consider themselves a governing body of just one because their sense of self is different from what we track. But when we destroyed, when Starfleet Intelligence took out the gateways eight months ago, it looked like they had a downturn in all that inner universe trafficking. You know, sure. about the same, the same time they started getting interested in those Bajoran orbs. Yes, but Tholians have also been interested in time in general, but No, actually, they've oh. been staunchly opposed to anything time travel okay. related. Really? Yeah, aside from that one yeah. incident that you know, with them and the Cations. And that yeah. was a that was a renegade. So there's, with that one, there's ah, got it. some type of schism within the the assembly itself. So that's something else we need to keep an eye on. But it looks like they're only they're interested in orbs, but the only one they specifically mentioned, because all the ones on our side are accounted for, it's just the Orb of Clarity that we're able to take back, that's the only one that they specifically mentioned. So did Falk, was he tied to that Renegade sect? Or were they trying to combat the Renegade sect? I guess it's something we need to figure out, or at least report. Oh, definitely definitely report just marks to keep an eye on did you get anything out of Visibir's data we got when she transmitted it to us when we escaped her underwater lair the encryption scheme Delta Bravo Epsilon 3 was used and that's usually favored by Captain Thurma Wool, Captain of the USS Silent Vigil, and uh, wife of Admiral Th Thomas Riker. Really? Yeah, which is rather curious. What? It, now, they, she said that they had all, all the information about our personal data. What else? Did you, anything more? Anything on weapon ship statistics? Uh, active. Ca they um, contains technical specifications about each vessel, including the active camouflage systems. Um, no classified personal data, which is. <laughs> I guess good, good news. Oh, right. But oh man. Okay. When did they did they get that information before Four we... days four days before uh we were dispatched to Orion. So they knew we were coming well in advance. And unfortunately so. Alright, we gotta get this up to the captain. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, captain's ready room or senior staff meeting? Um, 
Let's go to the captain first. Keep it small. Okay. Off to the captain's ready room. As soon as I figure out where the ready room is, there it is. Nope. Don't need those ones. We need these ones. And the captain. There we go. Uh, captain, you are busy in your ready room thinking of how, ways to outsmart yourself when there's a chime at the door. Enter. So you got a minute? We need to um, debrief you, and it needs to be as a secure environment as possible. <laughs> Not. We need to close information we have just uncovered from regarding the Tholian and the Orions. Understood. Please have a seat. Yes, sir. Um, we were able to get the information um, decrypted that we got from um, Fox's uh, computer that we were able to salvage, as well as Lieutenant Vaid was able to go through the information we got from Isabir on all the information she had on Starfleet Intelligence. What I'll, I'll go over what um, we got from Falk, so I'll let Lieutenant Vaid talk about um, Isabir's data. But we'll just kind of go over what we just discussed, but the Tholians operate as one body over a multitude of universes. We know for sure they operate as one between this universe and the mirror universe that we have been to. It's got the mirror me, um, you as the director of Starfleet Intelligence, and Chalmers apparently helping out the Jorn resistance against the Tholians. There he was setting up um, weapons trafficking, um, illicit arms and goods going through both universes. And that after we had took at, taken down the gateways eight months ago, they had a downturn in all their illicit weapons traffic. It was also about the same time they started becoming very interested in the Bajoran orbs. And it's probably about the same time they got a hold of the Orb of Clarity. That's the only one that's been mentioned by name, since all the ones in this universe are accounted for. That's pretty much all we had on Fox directly. Lieutenant? Uh, as for Isabir's data, um, turns out that they received information from the Syndicate about four days ago before we were dispatched to Orion, and information um, within that includes staff on board of the Nighthawk, Naginata, and Black Shields. Um, it, some of that information includes the specifications like the active camouflage systems, but no classified personnel data. And what was interesting about this is that it was encrypted using Delta Bravo Epsilon 3. Um, which Captain uh, Lull um, and the wife of Admiral Thomas Riker typically use. All right, so you're telling me that the personnel files that is a beard had on some of the Nighthawk personnel were encrypted. So even though she had them, she was unable to access them or Am I losing? Am I losing a version of these events here? So, uh, no classified personal data was included in this transfer. It's just they do have our base level information. Okay. On this that's, encryption. That's that's better news. Still concerning, but better. And then all the information board for the. Um, base level information tech data on the Nighthawk Naginata and the Black Shield and they knew we were going to Orion before we got there alright well four days in fact 
at least that rules out the suspicion that whoever this potential Mo might be may be on the Nighthawk. It's somebody higher up in Starfleet Intelligence, or somebody else that has access to someone higher up in Starfleet Intelligence. I understand that the wife of Admiral Riker may be a suspicion. Are there any other potential subjects that at least that you know of in the past that have at least received and also used this code before or this encryption scheme? Captain Thermo Lull is of the USS uh, Captain of the USS Silent Vigil is the only other person. And uh, DM, correct me if I'm wrong, but she's also an Orion. She is. Computer the location of the USS Silent Vigil. Processing. USS Silent Vigil currently on p intelligence patrol on the Romulan Klingon border. When did they last report their known position? Last known position was reported three days, 70, uh, three days, four hours ago. They have gone dark in preparation for long-term reconnaissance mission. At the silent vigil's maximum warp, would they be able to intercept the last known position of the Black Shield, the Naginata, and or the Nighthawk? Specify time frame. Within the last 72 hours. Last 72 hours would have them on inter would have the USS Silent Vigil rendezvous with both USS Black Shield and USS Naginata. All right, then. Hmm. Commander. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Ask your question first. Uh, GM, quick. Yes. Um, memory jogger. I've seen um, Captain Lul. Yes. Before when we had that big press, when we originally kicked off at the base, we got our initial orders. Yes, you and uh, Does both she look you anything... and Captain. Okay. Does she look anything like Isabir? Nope. Quite different. Okay. Thank God. You're welcome. I think we might have had a, a, a mirror me or a mirror her. <laughs> oh, GM's not that dastardly, but thank you for the plot idea. <laughs> You're paranoid here. <laughs> no, no, that's the Captain's name. <laughs> True. Mm -hmm. Commander Helsing, Lieutenant Vaid, based on the information that we've acquired, we're going to step into some very uncomfortable and potentially more dangerous territory. I understand that's probably the nature, the clandestine nature of our job, but considering that there's a mole, and even though it's not unusual, it's not unusual to be to be unable to contact reconnaissance ship currently that are currently in operations. I, I, a few hours ago, I attempted to contact the Black Shield, but I wasn't able to. If the Silent Vigil, if the captain of the Silent Vigil is actually running about and leaking information about the ships, that's the only common denominator that we have right now, and so I'm concerned for their safety. I'm, I'm not necessarily, I'm not necessarily gung-ho about doing so, but if worse comes to worse, and if necessary, I will enact the Starfleet Directive that will uh, allow me to go ahead and uh, grab some answers in a less un unofficial way, if you understand what I'm saying. Currently, we are on mission to the Badlands. We'll see how that goes for now. If there's any other update from these ships, we'll co we'll coordinate it with the information that we have now. If if we and if I actually do manage to get to, through to Commander Troll, we'll try to work out a plan from there. If not, though, we're going hunting. I rather stop this nip this problem in the bud before it gets any worse, potentially. So, Commander Helsing, you have your orders to 
prepare security accordingly if we have to arrest our fleet personnel. Uh, Lieutenant Vade, I'd also like a better potential way to identify anybody that put, that is coming from the mirror universe in a, co in a covert way. But I'd like to be able to do so with, I'd like to be able to do so at longer ranges without this, the, a, a personal scan. I understand that may be difficult. So if necessary, you have the entire ship systems at your disposal. Yes, sir. Lieutenant, we might be able to route your internal scans to the security systems and do a check of everybody on board. That way we constantly do scans security wise anyways. So it could just be fed into that. And that would only be you and me, maybe um, Dental Oxley. Keep in mind that I am not a person that keeps trees on lightly. And I don't, I'm not a person that takes trees in across, I'm, I'm a person that takes trees in across multiverses, even less so. It's a complicated slippery slope, so we'll have to proceed carefully. Okay. What is the, um, actually, no, that, the question's not relevant right now, I'll ask it later. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, so, while this is all going on, uh, anything from Commander Bashir? I figure I got the bridge. Yep, you got the bridge. Anything you want to do on the bridge? Uh, um, not until I get some orders. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> no, I'm good. Uh, anything... How's your balance, XO? Uh, a little sore. A little sore. Uh, so the state of your antenna, one of the, it was broken, and medical science has come so far, but it's still in a bit of a... I'm going to say that it's splinted because I think a splinted antenna is hilarious. And so do I. I agree. Yep. That's <laughs> <clears throat> what I get for taking one week or one week off. Ah. <laughs> My ah. It is what it is. Uh, Commander Thishran, anything that you're up to? Uh, yes, I'm currently working on a presentation to address the uh, shocking lack of um, knowledge in Lieutenant Vade's um, knowledge sphere. So I am present. I'm preparing a presentation on um, introduction to metaphors and i'm currently forcing um what's the name again Kassot to run through my presentation as as I, I run through the entire powerpoint slides oh boy oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, lieutenant Kassot is a perfect person to do this because he is a vulcan and and such things such as fish in a barrel qu elude him uh so so you see, when they say, when, when someone says that he broke my heart, they don't literally mean they broke their heart. Unless you're talking about Klingons, in which case they might literally break your heart. But usually that's not the case. And that's what we call a metaphor. Uh, Captain, this is all very insightful, Lieutenant Commander. However, I just came by to present you with the engine performance readouts for the week. I was, I, I was ill-prepared for a hour-long lecture on metaphors. Well, like, time flies when we're having fun, right? And uh, no, I mean, I, I know that time does not literally fly. Again, this is a metaphor. I hope you've, you've, you understand that now after this uh, presentation. Why, yes, I am, sir, I am beginning to understand how you treat the English, how you treat the Federation common language with the same care and respect that you treat our plasma conduit maintenance. Well, I'm glad that we've come to an understanding. You may leave now, and um, don't let the door hit you on your way out. Again, metaphor, because the door cannot hit you on the way out, because that's not how our doors work. Of course not, sir. They are sliding. If anything, they would catch our butts in a vice, which they are, of course, not going to do due to the fact that they can only exert three pounds of pressure before retracting. Mm. A very astute observation. Good Here, day. Well, I will I will accept your uh, report and uh, you may continue on. Thank you, Lieutenant Commander. As he turns around and you, you kind of think you might have seen an eye twitch, just ever so slightly. Okay. So, on that note, we are going to arrive. Uh, we are going to take a bit of an early bio break. I apologize for this, but it seems like a good place to take it before we delve into the enigma that is known as the Badlands. 
Uh, so we will come back, let's say, uh, five to the hour, so about ten minutes. And we will see you guys momentarily. Starting countdown. Muting. And we are back. So we are going to cut to the bridge where uh, Commander Bashir is in charge. And you are just told by Lieutenant Jefferson that, uh, Commander, we are arriving at the outskirts of the Badlands. On screen. Aye, sir. And. So from the outs or from the outside, or on its exterior, I should say, the Badlands looks like a like a rolling thunderhead, roiling clouds of billowy gases exude and cover up the violent in the violent storms on the inside. Only brief crackles of yellowish orange plasma streams burst out indicating that there is any sort of hazardous environment contained within. And I should mention that, Lieutenant uh, Vaid, you should have a handout with all various sciency things related to the um, Badlands, if anyone needs to ask you questions about it. Yes. That is anybody want, want me to answer any questions about it <laughs> oh you're you're a science uh, officer you could just speak and they will listen they're trying to ask if badlands is a metaphor but it's actually like bad it's bad it's not yeah, really so it's bad, it's like good. <laughs> and how much land is actually in the badland how much what land it doesn't look like land. It's an area of space, not land. Bad space? It's, yes. Yeah, why don't They're they call what? it bad space then? That thing is taken. <laughs> Perhaps the captain also needs to um, watch the, the metaphor presentation. <laughs> we all should. That'd be our season finale as we sit down and watch the metaphor presentation <laughs> oh, on PowerPoint. Uh, what have I started? What have we started? So I okay. have a question to the GM slash yes. vid. Uh, how has the how has the Badlands changed since um the Domin since the Dominion War? Uh, not a heck of a lot. It's well, Vaid knows how old it is, uh, so it's unlikely to have changed much since then. I mean, in terms of, yeah. like, spatial activity, I mean, the Maquis are gone, clearly, mm -hmm. but, I mean, in terms of that, though, yeah. is there any other... As yeah, obvious... Go ahead. Aside from a few uh, ill faith or f aside from a few survey and science missions, other than occasional and occasional police actions going in to root out uh, smugglers, etc., using moons or planets as bases. The Badlands has remained pretty much uncontested neutral space by all parties involved. Alrighty. That's my political question. Mm-hmm. If so. you wanted to know how old it was, though, it was 500,000 years old.
Oh, wow. <laughs> Also, that's, that's, that's my response. Wow. <laughs> also, uh, something to keep a note of, cloaking devices such as the Ro Romulans and the Synchethi shouldn't be able to function, but the our active camouflage system should be operational, assuming known your hits or direct strikes by plasma. So we need to be careful. Well, that's good news. I was afraid it wasn't going to be operational. Good. Mr. Davis, are you comfortable? <laughs> I've flown the. I've, I've flown in simulations before, sirs. I should have no trouble with this. Helsing puts yeah. the seatbelt. <laughs> How do you do that standing <laughs> up? Uh, there's a uh, boot boot belts. They wrap around his exactly. uh, feet. <laughs> Those, of course, right. go back to the knee. <laughs> All right, Mr. Davis, take us in. All right. Lieutenant, you should have led with the uh, the cloaking information. You got to read your audience. <laughs> <laughs> Active camel wanser. We'll keep that in mind <laughs> for the future. The share is going to take the lead on this mission for the foreseeable future. Yeah, cloaking on. Okay, uh, roll. First roll of the game. Uh, we're only an hour in. Uh, so, control engineering for the ship and structure plus security. Or, no, control engineering for one of you and structure security for the ship, please. I believe this is difficulty two. Computer security for the ship. Com Thank you. No problem. I have, I have it up. Roshan, you want to take it? Sure. So which one did you say? It's like uh, control. And... Uh, control engineering. Control engineering. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, two successes from the Nighthawk. I like this new character sheet you you, know, you got him to work I've been rolling crits all over the place uh, that means I should probably make sure it's rolling properly then shouldn't I <laughs> <laughs> yes. oh wow okay so that's five successes so you gain three momentum from this uh, the entrance into the badlands is pretty bumpy uh, all things considered as this you breach the outer cloud layer and make your way into its uh, stormy internal or interior. It looks like roiling, ah, roiling black and or black, orange, and yellow clouds cover all axes, all axes, above, below, and to all sides of your ship. Uh, Mr. Jefferson is flying by the seat of his pants trying to predict where the next uh, plasma columns are going to jump. Hmm. Lieutenant, is there any way to predict the plasma verse? Try uh, to find out. Uh, that would be an insight science, please. In the ship help? Uh, yes, ship can help with sensor science. Apologies, sorry. Uh, this will be a difficulty of three, just generally because the Badlands is so chaotic. One from Nighthawk. Uh, can sensor operations work as a focus? Absolutely. <clears throat> well, that's a lot of criticals. Yes! Nicely rolled. Uh, so five successes, difficulty three, you get two more momentum. Uh, so it's been a uh, so various iterations of the USS Enterprise have attempted to map the Badlands in the past. Uh, same with the USS Defiant, as well as a smattering of other Starfleet survey vessels. Uh, each of them, with slightly more advanced sensors than the last, have begun to predict or have begun to find telltale indicators 
of where plasma strikes may occur. Uh, generally, it seems to work in a similar fashion to lightning following the easiest path down. Uh, there you, appears to align a series of uh, com complex uh, molecules that seem to thrive in the uh, Badlands environment. As soon as a decent a number of them sort of float in place and form a chain between the various clouds or plasma cells, it forms a brief but extremely volatile connection. And also, Ved, you do happen to know that uh, warp fields above a certain energy level can attract these molecular columns to the ship like a lightning rod. Don't, don't go do anything that. past warp six. <laughs> yeah. Now, does she get a free question? She does. And then we also have an advanced sensor, so we get a bonus momentum. Yes, for you do. task assisted by buster, so we're maxed. You do. Uh, since uh, sensors are technically working at a more limited capacity, how does that work? Basic, <clears throat> sorry. Basically, that means that I get to increase difficulty in various sensor-related tasks. Okay. Yeah. Basically, you have fog of war turned on. Got it. I activate the Konami code. And... <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> okay. Okay. So. Commander, you are in the Badlands, an area of space that's approximately, I think, 87 light years in diameter. Where do you want to start? What exactly is our mission here, uh, Captain? We are to install a uh, sensor tap. There is a uh, there are rumors of Kathy's listening post in the Badlands, so we're, our orders are to identify it if it exists, and if so, then we'll install a signal tap so we can monitor future communications. Now you have the entire Badlands to explore. Now, Vade's free question: Could we use that to see as our way to? With the sensors we have to try to get a beat on the Zinkesi listening post, is there a special signal or that we know that's transmitting on? Or, well, that's a good question. Does Vade want to ask that? Sure thing. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, so the Zinkesi typic, uh, the yeah, Zinkesi communications typically uh, operate in the low band of the EM spectrum, typically. It doesn't allow for high information throughput, but it does allow for a significant uh, boost to signal resiliency. Um, as such, sh filtering out all of a lot of the no a lot of the high band noise from the Badlands, such as you know all of the bloody plasma strikes that are occurring mere meters away from your ship, might be a good way to narrow things down a bit. Basically, being in an area where there are very few plasma strikes. Well, that too. Is there any way? What do we know about the current Zenkethi? Uh, let's see. Current Zenkethi are a race that has long since. Um, engineered itself to be uh, to to exist in a highly caste based society uh, they are t uh, they're, the castes that the federation sees are typically those of either the diplomacy or the security castes and those are typically on the hulking side of humanoid uh, they have sort of a s long elongated snout on top uh, they have uh, four arms uh, two of them are extremely massive and are at the tops of the shoulders. Um, but not all the Zinkethi operate them with great dexterity. Uh, they have, for proper 
ah, there's another pair of smaller arms that are uh, the, that all of them have fine motor control over. They don't, or their skeletal structure is extremely lacking. Uh, they have spines and enough bones to support their legs, but most of their mu most of their body is controlled almost strictly of tightly wound muscles. Um, oh. And a sort of a water, uh, sort of a I forget the proper term, but. Instead of a skeletal structure, they have uh, water, water pockets which hold every, which provide the um, foundation, allowing them to be, allowing them to weather extremely strong hits, but at the same time, uh, water is rather uncompressible, so it's ex an extremely strong material. Uh, Wasn't there like a big war with the Klingons at one point? Yeah, there was. Am I thinking something else? Because for some reason, I when, I, when you mentioned the Zakepi, I was thinking yeah. like almost like a griffin, and like something about a. Hi I'm trying to remember my history mm. with the Zakepi, and that just was. That's more. It was more of a personal and character question. <laughs> There's another race that's kind of like the weird yeah. centaur beast. Mm-hmm. Okay, maybe that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Because that picture that you just posted was like, oh, okay. <laughs> that was not what I had in my head. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, as a po uh, current relations with the Federation is that there was a brief uh, skirmish potential war that was brewing in the late 2360s, early 2370s that sort of just was called to, ah, was a peaceful that reached a peaceful well more of a cold war style ending uh, they then sort of kept to themselves and became members of the typhon pact later on they their most interesting contribution to the typhon pact seems to have been their uh, genetic engineering and biotechnology sciences and in return, they seem to have taken great use, or they seem to have taken uh, fondness for Romulan cloaking technology. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, so that's where we're at uh, mm. politically. Okay. Curious. Curious. Mm hmm. All right. Yeah, so basically, finding this planet is going to is an extended task. And one okay. that is actually going to occur over several days because this sector of space is fairly large, uh, fairly chaotic, and there's just a lot of stuff to look at. There's a significant number of planets, moons, asteroids, only two actual star systems, but enough rogue planets, planetoids to, you know, plus former smuggler operations could be really anywhere in here um, so this so because you have a you've already figured out a good hunting method that drops the magnitude of the task by one so what we're looking at here is a work track of let's say 17 we have a difficulty of it was four now it's going to be three magnitude of two and a resistance of three. Uh, so tests to do this would be something along the line of insight science, insight engineering, um, let's see, various co uh, helm related activities to come up with good search patterns, that sort of thing. All right. Lieutenant, uh, that scanning is your gig. So why don't you start us off, please? Okay. Uh, so, right. insight science, and the ship can assist with sensor science. Advanced sensors without lower the difficulty by one? I didn't think you had advanced sensors. I thought that the ship only had high precision. Does it have advanced sensors? We have high resolution sensors. Yeah. 
So yeah. Oh, it's high resolution. Yeah, you have high resolution, not advanced, because I find advanced sensors to be too broken, really, for my games. And gotcha. speaking of broken, that is six successes. So you're already maxed out on momentum. So that's three floating momentum. I guess you could use it to ask questions, create advantages, or anything of the like. Um, but... Can we uh, break down some of that uh, penetration there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you certainly can. That... Uh, so if Vade could please roll me seven challenge dice, please. Okay, that's uh, seven successes already. How do you wish to spend any... F and you have three momentum. So you can use the momentum to buy extra dice, re-roll zeros, uh, reduce the resistance, that sort of thing. Uh... One momentum will take off two resistance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, so you're spending one momentum? How much resistance is there? Three. I... So two momentum would get rid of all three. Y'all alright with that? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that is going to take this down to there. We're difficulty of two. Magnitude of one. Yeah, it's floating. You still have one floating momentum. Got it. Uh, I'll go ahead and re-roll that one zero. Sure. Let's see what it does. And there's another one. Okay. So we're tracked down to nine. Vey, do you have any, any talents that'll give you any special things when you have effects? Uh... <laughs> Not that I know of. I'll have to dig those up. I'll do that right now. Okay. Okay, uh, so roughly a day is going to go by as you commit, you begin scanning through the Badlands. It's a mess, even with the signal, even with the, uh, even with the likely signal band um, that you're looking for. <clears throat> Does anyone have anything that they wish to do during this time? Um, I needed with Veya to come up with uh, security sweeps whenever ah, she has yes. a moment. Well, that's a good enough time to start doing something along those lines. So that sounds like a good scene to do in the data lab. So we're doing that. And because this gets him involved a little more, let's bring in the engineer because engineering is stuff that he likes to do as well as talk about metaphors. So, during your off hours, as the starship begins to follow a pre preset search pattern based on likely locations of signals, the three of you are now in the data lab. Aethertran, one of the things Mirami said when we saw him on Orion was he knew I was there. He said he had a way and he pointed like a little watch that he could, he was notified whenever there was another one of his duplicates that was in the vicinity. So I was figuring it was tied to DNA and quantum signatures or something like that. So if he could track it, there's got to be a way for us to track it. And we're always running security sweeps throughout the ship anyway. So putting some type of that type of device into those security sweeps anytime we do transporter events and even into tricorders to actually do a an individual scan but how to go about doing that is beyond me interesting so he's able to track you across the dimensions he knew we were he knew one i don't know if he knew exactly which one until he saw who it was, but he knew it was one of the other one of our, what do you call us? Yeah. Miramis. 
I'll come up with a better simile later. Huh. Metaphor. All right. And you're thinking we go to try to reverse engineer, come up with a way to, to track him back? Track him back? Okay. Right now, between you, Lieutenant Vayed, and the captain, and me, that's the only ones who know about this. But we're trying to make sure that there's nobody else from the mirror universe on board the ship, potentially masquerading as one of the original crew members. Uh, okay. And then okay. potentially taking it a step higher, where they could use the ship sensors and scan another ship in case that ship's been taken over. Some of that intel that we got from the Tholian and from Isabir um, is showing there's a likelihood of uh, a breach within Starfleet itself and within the intelligence branch specifically. Well, I should be able to figure something out. I fi if they did something um, to be able to track you, I should be able to find a way to, to uh, sense them. Um, Commander, help. Yes, do you do you happen to have anything that would contain the mirror use, like sig? The only thing I had was the the detonator. Did we get that back? If you spend two momentum to create the advantage, I say that you will. Yeah, we'll spend the two momentum. Okay. So we have the detonator that he gave me. That was at least built by him, or used by him. He could have bought it on Orion. He could have sourced everything internally. But that's the only thing I know that I specifically got from his hands. Okay, I want you to pass it over. I'll, I'll do inspection. Then I'll figure something out. All right. Uh, uh, roll me a uh, insight plus. Let's see. So if you if you could roll an insight engineering, please, Mr. Thashran, and Miss Vaid could roll me a insight plus science. And let's start with a difficulty of three on this. Okay, I'll spend one momentum to get extra die. Sure. Am so, I assisting? Uh, you're assisting, yes. <clears> hmm. <throat> Okay, that's the three successes you need. Okay. Uh, so I should get, use momentum to get rid of the uh, Actually, complication. Actually, uh, to get rid of the complication, you give me threat. Uh, oh, you, you give me threat. two threat to get rid of the complication. And I prefer you didn't, because I have a perfect complication in mind. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, let's go with that. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so, uh, Thashran, you hook it up to a... Uh, an atomic molecular structure, or scanner, and begin a full uh, molecular scan of the thing. Uh, you do find that its quantum signature does place it outside this universe, um, the quote unquote, the actual mirror universe to be precise. So it was definitely brought by the counterpart. Uh, you're also able to gather two sets of DNA from it. One is the, or I should let's just call it quantum DNA. Uh, one quantum DNA set, of course, is from Helsing's counterpart. The other is from Helsing. Of, there's also trace amounts of Orion DNA from where uh, Isabir and her thugs handled the device. But you're pretty sure that that's inconsequential to your investigation. Uh, all in all, with the inform with the material sciences and the organics. Our organic sciences that the two of you find, um, Lieutenant Vaid, you believe that there is, um, while it would be taxing to the ship's power, you could create a uh, feedback, or you could create a sensor uh, feedback system uh, utilizing the sensor array and the deflector dish. That would sort of act as a, sort of like a black light would on a um, organic material. So cause it to stand out in a typical sensor scan. 
And Mr. Thishran, whether or not you decide to tell anyone this, the detonator that uh, Commander Helsing has, it appears that it has been triggered. Which, oh, it, which, which is very interesting because Mr. Helsing, his report says that he never actually triggered it. I'm going to have to find some time to talk to you, uh, Helsing, alone later. All right. And so we're going to... So let's do the next... Ah, sorry. Let's do the next part of the extended task for finding the planet, or finding the... Yeah, finding the Zenkathy installation. Uh, let's see. So we've already done the science part. You've already figured out more or less where to go. Let's have a. Uh, let's have a. Let's have Jefferson roll something because it's fun to have the con officer do something. Um, so if Mr. Jefferson could please roll me. So this is an activation, of course. Uh, if he could roll a control plus con test, and the ship will assist with. Let's do sensors plus con. The, and I believe that this is a difficulty two. I got Jefferson. Sure. <clears throat> and... Well, that's a bit of a bummer on that front, but at least it's not a complication range, so, you know, there's that. Should have increased it. <laughs> Two 19s. Say, Levy. Can, um, can I get a new character sheet? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think this has anything to do with his character sheet this time. Those are double 19s rolled. Yeah, well. It looks like it's rolling, right? Yeah. Sorry. At least uh, Helsing had an excuse with his technical difficulties, but in this instance, it's <laughs> Jefferson just, you know... Apparently the simulation training for Jefferson was not as good as he thought it was. <laughs> Which will add an entire extra day to your search. So, let's go down to engineering and start working on the modifications to detect mirror universe stuff, shall we? And, because I feel a little guilty that he's not involved, let's have the commander come down and supervise things. So, we are in engineering. Oh, there's two Thashrans. We don't need, we can barely handle one Thashran. Mirror Thashran. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we don't have the goatee for, for him. All right, now Bashir, you wander into engineering to find Vaid working on deflector controls and Thashran working on sensors. Lieutenant Kassat is trying his best to stay as far away from the pair as possible. Lieutenant, Lieutenant Commander, how's it going? It's going, sir. <laughs> as fast as I can go. <laughs> good to hear it. It's going pretty well. It's it's a good thing we don't have uh, too many cooks in the kitchen, if you know <laughs> what that means. Are we cooking, though? <laughs> then, Ava, just wait until uh, we find some downtime, and I'll, I'll, I'll run you through the entire presentation, and that will clear up the entire meaning behind the expression. In her head, she's thinking, oh, no, please no. <laughs> <laughs> if only the prophets could save me now. <laughs> yes, I imagine this will shall be a very satisfactory dish. But this is... Ah, never mind. Can uh, I go back to the bridge now? No. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> you sure you sure you want to stick around and and uh, keep hearing me dish it out? Uh. <laughs> she until the cows come home. Uh, uh, Thashran, um, you feel a or not Thashran, but sure, you feel a wave of nausea coming over you. Whether it is um whatever uh, Thashran is serving up, or if your antenna has just sort of come out of alignment again, that's up to you. Mm. Yeah, um, keep up the good work, uh, I'll happily give you some inspiration, uh. <laughs> yeah, so, <sighs> if I'm, don't worry, oh, sorry, go ahead, we'll, 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 we'll burn that midnight oil if we need to, <laughs> uh, Lieutenant Vade, if you could please roll me a control plus science, and if the Shran can assist with control plus engineering. This is going to be a difficulty of three. Is this a sensor's focus? This is, yes. And that's four successes. So you get one momentum out of the deal. <clears throat> it takes so, a... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Great. Um, sorry. Uh, the Shran, have you had any chance uh, to look over the blueprints that we've gotten from the Mirror Universe? of the uh, sensor arrays? Uh, would I have had time to look that over? Oh yeah, it's Do been it's okay. been a couple weeks, or about three weeks now since that adventure, so yeah, you, you've had time to look it over. Okay. Yeah, yeah I've, had, I've had some time to um, glance things over. My thinking is, would any of that help our situation here? Hmm. Uh, reason engineering. Difficulty of two. Okay. <clears throat> well, there's the two successes you need. Uh, so, when he was speaking about this uh, specifications, uh, Captain Chalmers, not Director Chalmers, Captain Chalmers, mentioned that... Th he was giving you guys the bulky version that would be that would really only operate well in stationary or space based uh, structures uh, the technology is very incredible but it's also very bulky and not all that compatible with the Nighthawks current systems it's something that will require specific structures to be uh, to be built and deployed It's a good, it's a good suggestion, Andrew, but unfortunately, it's uh, doesn't quite uh, not quite compatible. It's not it's a bit too bulky for our purposes to be used in this manner. I was just curious. Thank you. <laughs> okay. And as uh, Bashir turns around to head out, uh, Ved, your console lights go green as your configurations to the sensor array and the deflector dish. Um, finally lock into place without any noticeable programming bugs which is kind of cool because apparently Commander Thashran deals with his, uh, progr with his uh, programming codes the same way he treats the um, plasma manifolds looks like I'm done cooking I think at least <laughs> Excellent. Uh, I think we can tell the bridge that it's uh, bon appetit. <laughs> Is that really the right term for that? After this, perhaps I shall... Um, <laughs> you should go to the replicator and ask for it to uh, replicate your copy of the uh, dummy's guide to metaphors. And don't worry, that it, it's not actual for actual test dummies. It's... The, 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 a anyways, just read it and you'll see. You'll see what I mean. As I'm yes, leaving sir. the um, engineering and heading back to the bridge, I kind of lean back and say, well, this entire conversation seemed half-baked. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Uh, red alert, we have a fire in engineering. Someone just got burned. <laughs> uh. 
<laughs> okay, and with that, let's do another one of those extended tests. Uh, let's do another science C test. So, um, yeah, let's do another insight science, please. Uh, sensor operations would work as a focus. Uh, ship can assist with either computer science or sensor science, whichever one you want. That's two from Vaid. And who's got the ship? <clears throat> okay. I do uh, have testing a theory. I do not know. And the ship gets an, yeah. because of its sun, gets an extra momentum since it uses yes, sensors. It does. Yes, it does, which I believe brings you up to six. Um, Vaid, if you could please roll me seven challenge dice. Okay. <clears throat> oh, that's a few zeros. Uh, that's five successes so far. Now, a question about testing a theory. When it mm -hmm. says roll an additional d20, is that for the initial roll? Yes, that would have been for your previous okay. thing. Yeah, so yeah. that... Um, I will allow this. So roll. Uh, you've already succeeded and got the momentum, so we'll, we'll just keep that in back pocket for future. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> uh, so you have... Six momentum, um, a lot of zeros, and three resistances. So as it stands right now, you would have two successes. Or you would have, contribute two to the work track. So you can use a momentum to re-roll the zeros. Yeah, I was about to do that. W would that take care of all the zeros? Or yes, it would. One, one momentum for all zeros. Okay, I'll go ahead and do That'd be four zeros, right? Mm-hmm. Four challenge dice. And that's a, another five, so a grand total of ten successes. Holy cow. Woo! Uh, so, uh, let's see. Even with the resistance, that should bring it down to... Yeah, so with the resistance of three, that would bring it down to a, a three work track left. Nope, two work track left. Sorry. Can we spend, is this where you do like one momentum for like two successes? Yes, uh, two, pure, two penetration, yes. Yeah, so that would take care of the resistance. That would let us meet the work track. Okay. Hey. So. Is, it, is that two momentum or one momentum to do that? Uh, uh, one momentum to uh, drop it. Yes, they spend one momentum to drop two resistance. Okay. So, no thanks to. Ah. I just blanked on his name. No thanks to uh, Lieutenant Davis' uh, fl flying attempts, but eventually, after a couple days within the Badlands, uh, Lieutenant Vaid, your system brings up a possible hit near one of the. Ah. Near one of the stars, ah, near a rogue gas giant uh, that has accumulated several small moons and detritus around it. It is, while it is on a, on a, on listed star ch on listed surveys, given the turbulent nature of the Badlands, this planet seems to rove around on its own accord. Uh, when the USS Enterprise. NCC-1701 first entered the Badlands back in the 20-22-something uh, or other, uh, Kirk decided to name it Fido, as it just seems to roam around on its own accord. The name seems to have stuck, and is now in the proper, pla in the, um, proper guide of planetary, name, ah, planetary survey reports for the Badlands. Uh, the signal, in particular, co is coming from one of Fido's moons. Uh, quick sensor scan of the planet reveals a small cubes or 
a very small basic cube structure with a series of antennae poking from it. Can we get a, a further analysis of the type of metal or whatever the structure is actually made out of? Is it specifically to resist uh, the atmosphere of the Badlands, or is it there to help amplify whatever signals being it's used for? So on and so forth. Uh, this would be an insight plus engineering role. If someone has metallurgy, that would be the best option, but structural design, structural engineering. Rani has, I think, that. Well, if someone wants to roll for Rani. Um, this is going to be a difficulty of two. So She has mining equipment. Not quite the same. But this is an activation for her. You could give her metallurgy as a focus. Assuming she has focuses left to earn from activations. Is her a max? Uh, yeah, I believe you can only give her up to six focuses. She has six. She's max. We're going to have to swap something out. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, and you can only swap out uh, that stuff when you can when you spend milestones. So if she's at max, then someone else could take it, or you'll just have to do us you'll just have to do a thought without any focuses, which isn't terrible. It just lowers your critical chance. You want to take it for Shran? Sure. All right, inside engineering, and the ship will uh, can assist with computers engineering. What's the difficulty again? Uh, difficulty of two. Okay. Nighthawk's rolling well tonight. I don't think it's failed once. Don't jinx it. Oh no, I'm the, I should be jinxing it. I'm the GM. Dang it. Okay, that. That is... was why he said it. I know. Uh, three successes, one momentum. <clears throat> And what, so what you're getting out of this is that the structure is uh, made of a tritanium alloy that is designed to resist, and sh uh, it's designed to resist the, if, ah, the effects of plasma strikes and redistribute them, such as an aircraft distributing a lightning strike. Um, it is also designed to uh, house a class M atmosphere inside of it, but, uh, but it's also thick enough that it blocks any sensors from actually seeing what's inside. Uh, so to get to it, you would need a shuttlecraft or wait, you ha or enhanced transporters with a little bit of finger crossing. I'd also like to make another roll to determine the actual... Uh where the signal is being sent, or the general direction, if it's being routed anywhere. Okay. Uh, so this will be... Um, insight plus... Insight plus... Nope, reason plus science. And the ship will assist with communications and science. This is going to be difficulty three. Ha! Crit fail from the Nighthawk. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Had to say something. Yep. Yep, we did. It was on purpose. I've just in. I just secretly enabled the uh, crit roll macro. Mm -hmm. Yep. This is this is because he didn't start with threat last. Yeah, <laughs> basically. <laughs> um, speaking of, uh, so who's rolling the communications test? Is that Rani? Is that Vaid or Thashran? Or the captain? That's Rani. Again. Okay. She is, she is a sensor, so. Yeah. Reason science. Hmm. Uh, 
Ranny just looks puzzled over her console. I'm sorry, sir. I'm not able to track the signal. I can follow it for approximately half a light year, but after that, plasma storms interfere with our sensors. I just cannot get a good reading. And on uh, that, so... Want to give them threat to get rid of the complication? Yeah, you'd better give me that threat if you want, or otherwise that complication's got to come into play. No thanks, sir. Momentum, no. please. Uh, all right, so the complication will take effect. Well, I, I'm spending this momentum. Oh, you're spending... Th no. Threat. Uh, yo, you oh, have threat, to... threat, 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 threat. I oh, keep forgetting yeah. the way it actually yeah. works. Yep, you spend threat. Yep. Okay, darn. Threat. All right. Might be. That's fine. Yes, I'm spending this threat. Okay, that's the, th that's the threat. Or, I'll take threat. Thank you very much. And... What do you wish to do with the information that has been provided? Seems like the proper time to uh, prepare. Send a shuttle. Send a shuttle. Go investigate. We're out here in the Badlands alone, so even if there is a cl Class M environment within that structure, I'm not necessarily opposed to going in there heavily armed. I mean, no one, as long as the Nighthawk blocks any other outgoing communications or jams the signal once we actually engage, I, I say we uh, go in there and start getting some answers. So, combat armor and Type 3s? Type 3s. Mm. Uh, I agree with the combat armor. We might as well spend the points to do it because these are big. I mean, yeah, we're taking. TVA suit, so we'll have to spend Are we? opportunity. We, Anyways. we don't have to because there's a. Um, oh, that. Well, I suppose I'll ask that question whether I need to scan for it or roll for it or whatever. The structure that's actually there on the surface, if we need to get there in the shuttle, even if there's a. Can we, can we access it? Like, is there a port that, is there a port that we could dock with and force open? If we're not attempting to transport, uh, if you want to spend two momentum, I'll give you that advantage. All right then, I'll go ahead and do that instead of giving the GM more threat to make things more difficult for us, so we don't have to take the EVA suits. All right. So, so I'll yep. create the advantage, so we don't have to take the shoots, but we'll take the combat armor. Okay. So you're down to three momentum now. Uh, Jefferson Davis reports from the. A reports that there is an airlock there is an airlock type structure that is compatible with all standard federation shuttle models okay so away team time who's going so well healthy will go leave Loxley on the bridge to run security Okay. Recommend at least two security people. At uh -huh. least. Yep. Uh, Thashran, or Bashir, this I believe is yours, so who do yep. you want? Actually, sorry to interrupt. Mm -hmm. I, I keep a Helsing Captain's prerogative on the ship only because, even though I shouldn't have, I did, de I did delve into his personal logs, and if he's feeling a little bit more de uh, deprecative, deprecative recently. I'd like him to want to actually just sit this sit this one out. So, not that he has to feel the need to prove himself after the events that happened on Orion. I'll mm -hmm. still give him his space whether or not he wants to talk to the council or somebody else himself, but I'm going to say, you, you probably should stay here, buddy. Yeah, I was, was going to say the exact opposite. I, was gonna, I wanted to let him lead and give him <laughs> some... Uh... <laughs> Because this is a heavy armed and militarist, I thought that would be good for his ego. <laughs> well, as, as you wish, sir. Have Loxley lead the team. Okay. Lead the security attack. So we'll have Loxley. Okay. Um, Bashir, are you going down? Yeah, well. Okay. So. 
All right, so we oh, have. Oh no! After sure. our last away mission, I'm a little weary. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Bashir and Loxley. Who else? Um, Vaid. Who do you want to bring along? Like I said, I would like science and engineering. I don't care mm -hmm. if they want to bring their mains or alternates. I can go as sure. neat. Okay, so Vaid. Yeah, the shot. The Shran is on. Bring along the Shran. And I'm assuming Miss Jackson wants to come down because someone needs to fly the ship. Okay. Okay, so we're still a little light on security, which is perfectly fine from my perspective. But, you know. So, Anara or um, Noel that round out the two for security, or if we need a third, both of them. Okay, cool. So Noel and Hanara. Okay. Loxley, so that'd be three security? Yep, three security plus Bashir and Jackson. Okay. Now, if we do... Type 3, that's Opportunity 1, Escalation 2, and Combat Armor is oppor Opportunity 1, Escalation 1. Mm -hmm. So that's a bunch of threat. That's a bunch more threat for me. Hooray! Okay. Well, if Pulse Grenades go with it, that's another Opportunity 1, Escalation 2. Well, that could... So your call, Cap. Or commander, probably. Yeah. Go for it. I want to go in the heavy because I don't know what we're dealing with. All right. Now Helsing is really sad because they got grenades and phaser threes. <laughs> uh, maybe if one of them wears one of those um, live camera things, then Helsing could live uh, vicariously. Oh, they have body cams, of course. Oh yeah, of course. All right. So, I'm on... Sure we're being judged now by how we co <laughs> do <didn't> come. <laughs> uh, we, leave the, we leave that part of the debriefing to everyone's imagination. Anyways. Uh, now, which shuttle are you taking down? The Type XX, one of the Type 9s, or the Amazon Runabout? Well, I'm assuming the Amazon, because that's the one you have up there. <laughs> um, that's the Type XX, actually. Oh. That's just oh, what I use for my away team uh, prep sheet. But I can copy-paste into the Amazon easily enough. So the Phantom, is that the Amazon? Uh, nope, that would be... Yeah, the Phantom is oh. an Amazon. Yeah, oh yeah, US is Phantom. That's the Amazon, yes. Yeah. Yeah, Phantom would probably be the better one. Okay. Phaser Banks. Okay. And a tractor. Make the GM uh, redo all of his tokens, why don't you? Okay. Wait till he gets that, then we'll change it. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> I'm everybody into the into the Spectre. Okay, everybody into the USS Phantom, which Bashir likes because it has a proper commander's chair. Okay. Uh, if Miss Jackson could please roll me a control plus con, and the USS Phantom can assist with uh, engines plus con. This is going to be a difficulty of two. Uh, sorry, I should mention this is a scene change, so you lose one momentum. And we will see how the landing goes. Not much there from the Phantom. And <clears throat> and Miss Jackson just sings. Uh, so that would be uh, two more momentum. So you're up to four total. So unlike, uh, so despite the fact that Miss Jackson and uh, Mr. Davidson, or nope, Mr. Jefferson, Jackson and Jefferson were 
flying on the same sim, it seems that Mr. Jefferson was flying on easy mode, whereas Miss Jackson was flying on realistic mode, because this is absolutely nothing to her. Now, you guys barely feel a bump as you depart uh, the USS Nighthawks shuttle bay down through its turbulent uh, ion storms, and you come in ah, and you come into a nice smooth docking position with the airlock. It hisses, indicates a positive pressure seal, and you're good to go. What are your orders, Commander? There we go. <coughs> All right. Security first. Let's break the seal. Yeah, Lax will tell Nolan and Hanara to take the lead. Okay. Okay. Marching order beyond security. <coughs> uh, Lieutenant Jackson. Stays here. Uh, keep an eye on the ship and be ready. And uh, Noel and Hanar first, and the rest are behind. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Copy. So once they enter through the airlock, Miss um, Jackson, you lose their life signs given the type of material. And you guys find yourselves in here. <clears throat> so, a large structure. Uh, it's, ex or its interior walls don't even have drywalling or anything aesthetic on it. Uh, you can see bare scaffolding. Uh, keeping the structure or uh, keeping the structure open or keeping the structure standing I should say uh, no windows no uh, no decorations nothing of the sort there's not even there's not many computer panels or displays either uh, you come in on the second floor there's a there's a long catwalk that leads to a single flight of stairs heading down it is built for it is obviously built for Zenkethi biology or anatomy as the steps are just slightly uh, further apart than you uh, humanoids are used to not so much that it causes too much of a consternation just mm, causes you a few stumbles as you may make your way up and down uh, in the main area beneath the staircases lies a series of computer banks each of them are standing pretty much, uh, uh, pretty much freestanding. There's nothing. They don't appear to be connected to any massive wall screens or any of the, the like. They're more standing consoles. Uh, as, however, you also get to see a series of Zenkethi dotted around the area. Two of them appear to be at the computer station. Uh, one is at the bottom of the staircase. Uh, this individual appears to be a command type individual. <laughs> and the, each of them are carrying a, um, a Zinkethi issued particle rifle. Uh, they don't, uh, they look up. There's a minor grunt between the three, between all of them, and they begin to open fire. Well, I should say, good guys get to go first, so they're definitely ra raised and not in the, not in the mood to negotiate. Lieutenant Saran, grill them. Metaphorically grill them, sir? Yes. <laughs> uh, so, who wants to take the first action? 
unless you want to wait for them to shoot first, because I can do that too. No. Loxley, I'll do call to action for Loxley. She can pull and shoot. Right. Or aim or whatever. You get the extra action. Right. So you give both. So we have um, type three. So they have the accurate. Mm -hmm. So you can do the aim for. We'll do aim for the, that free one. And I'll also do charge for area. Because oh, I get a free minor action, yeah. my minor action, then my major. And then I'll shoot at the... If I shoot at the leader... Uh, so I'm just going to move these into areas. So yep. these three are in one area. These two are in... <laughs> I'm moving my mouse as if that actually tells you which is which. But, awesome. yeah. <clears throat> uh, these three are one area. These three are another. Or these two. And which one's the closer area? Um, so these, uh, the bottom square are located at the very base of the staircase. Technically, they're currently the most distant, but they're also the ones that could easily charge up and do stuff to you. Uh, these right. ones are geographically closer, but at the same time, they really can't get much closer to you unless they spend more actions. Right, I'll shoot at these three. Okay. At the... At the... So accurate will get me to reroll any number of d20s before it can be rerolled. Control security. Um, give me a momentum for a third die. Okay, that's the three successes. You only needed two, so... I'm going to re-roll that one zero using aim. All right. <clears throat> and that's five successes. Um, so three momentum. That will bring you back up to six. Okay. And she gets eight. Uh, let's see, five, three, 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 yeah, nine. That's I'll use one momentum to reroll the zeros. Okay. So that's eight total. And that is a lot of successes, so that will affect everyone in the area. <clears throat> so with one well-placed, well-aimed spread effect, which really kind of counteracts the whole purpose of aiming when you really think about it. But hey, that's the mechanics. Uh, these three become stunned and are no longer part of combat. Yeah. I think there's no Ah nobody has quick to action. I don't no, I don't think anyone does. No, that's usually a Helsing thing and Helsing's not here. Yeah. Well, I guess it's my turn. Cool. Which means now, I'm assuming that we're following proper march order, so Ve Ebro would be more or less at the front. And... Yeah. Having a Noel, so she's got boarding op operations take the lead. Okay, that works. Ah, I'm just moving tokens every which way. There. Okay, so one of my Zenkethys gets to fight next. I would be using the commander, but you've already shot him, so, you know, I'm not mad. But this is going to hurt. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, let's see. He's going to raise a particle rifle and shoot at Miss Noel. Uh, let's see. It takes a minor action to aim. 
and it will attempt to fire. I will re-roll that one d20 because I aimed. And that will hit. So, what's the damage? Well, that's five. And because you've given me so much threat, I'm going to spend... You have resistance on body armor. Yeah. So, I'm going to spend one threat to re-roll those zeros. Uh, nope, that's the wrong macro. Pay no attention to the ma that macro. Uh, two. Okay, so that's six. And because I have a lot, I'm going to spend one point of threat to lower her resistance by two. So that's okay. six points of stress damage to her. And it is lethal damage, too. So. Is anybody taking no? So if you use lethal damage, does that mean we get more? No. Nope. So, no. with it being lethal damage, mm -hmm. she has to spend her determination. Uh, she could either take the injury and go uh, and go out of combat, um, or she could spend her... You could give me two momentum, and she could keep... Um, Ah, uh, you know what? We looked this up last time too, and I've already forgotten those rules. <laughs> me too. Because uh, um, I think it's like, yeah, she, because it was me, and I didn't want to say that, yeah, because she could just shrug it off, and like, if she gets hurt at all, she dies. Or no. Waxy's got combat medic and can restore some of the stress back. Yeah, if she stays up. Right. Uh, let's see. Injury, injury, injury. What was it called? Avoidant injury? Yes. We hurt so much, so. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Can be injured in combat, can suffer complications, normal, yada, yada, yada. An uncontrolled character may not spend momentum or add to threat, but someone is controlling this character, so that's fine. I believe it is to spend two momentum to avoid an injury. Okay. Yeah. It's probably worth it. Okay. But okay. that doesn't take the determination, does it? It does not, no. Uh, you could use okay. the determination if you had no momentum. Okay, good, good, good. That makes sense. So yeah. She'll stay up. Okay. Uh, she takes a particle beam straight to the eh, let's use a, let's use a wrath or let's use the old um, Warhammer 40k injury table to see where it hits 72 right leg be the only spot she hasn't been hit before ah. okay and that's his turn uh, one of your guys gets to go Uh, probably Hanara. Sure. You guys do have grenades, too. It'd be a shame if you didn't use them. Just a thought. Of course, there's all this de delicate equipment down here that you might not want to damage. Where is that? Listen to the GM. <laughs> so, does anybody want to take Hanara? Sure. Vaid, you can roll Hanara. Control security. Now, if they aim, they have dead eye marksmen. Ooh, that's deadly. That reduces difficulty level. So it's. By one, they only need one success. Nice. But they'd only be able to take out one and shoot the one who hadn't shot yet. Yeah. Alright, so. Okay. So I'll go ahead and. Control security. And that's three successes. You only needed one, so you're back to three momentum. And if you could please roll me nine challenge dice, please. Okay, that's five. Let's 
zeros. Be, yeah. Momentum to get rid of it. Okay. And that's nine. Okay. This one gets stunned immediately. Okay. Um, I'm just going to assume that between the four of you who have yet to go, it's enough to stun this one, too. <laughs> one of you's bound to hit. In what is most likely the poorest defense measures of all time, uh, the Zenkathy troopers go down barely putting up a fight at all. And that takes us out of combat. Um, Waxley's going to go to Noel and do a combat medic on her. Oh, Waxley does have quick action. Oh. A little late now, but good to know. Yeah, yeah. So what is the first aid task? 174. Uh, first aid is 174, yeah. which I am... Uh, first aid, you may make a daring plus medicine task with a difficulty of one. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Although that just means that the injured character is stabilized. So, your Loxley didn't, or Noel didn't get injured, so no need for the first aid task. Especially because you rolled a crit, or a crit failure. Yeah. So, but yeah. You rolled out of that we on a test one which moment. wasn't needed, so... Okay. I'll be a nice GM. One Thank you. <laughs> but they can one momentum to cause a recipient to regain points of stress equal to the number of the character's medicine. Oh, it's only... Oh, that's interesting. Which would be three. That is... Well, the problem is that she failed the test, so... Yeah. Uh, yeah, so... It says whenever they... They may spend oh. one momentum. Oh, whenever they attempt, when not they even attempt. succeed? Yeah, that's what's weird. Huh. That is peculiar. Okay. Um, yeah, let's just run with that for now. So, uh, I, so Loxley gets to... Or, not Loxley. Loxley heals Noel by three. Which is odd, but cool. Okay. Anyways, back to the scene. So, Lieutenant, can we get scans to see if there's any more of these folks around? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, insight medicine for life signs. And security is going down to secure the unconscious and Kathy. Okay. Okay, that is one success. Uh, what was that for? Just securing them? I, oh. I accidentally... <laughs> uh, what's your Ooh. insight medicine score of their uh, vid? Insight and medicine is. Uh, sorry, you cut out there. Sorry, insight is ten and medicine is four for vid. Okay, that would have been enough to get the two successes you need. Uh, so good news. Uh no more, th no more than Kathy. Okay. Curious news. Uh, your scans <coughs> of these Zenkethi indicate a distinct lack of um, brain functions. They, Their brains are extremely simple. And they don't seem to have much in the way of uh, independent thought or control. Is that normal for Zinkathy? Nope. Not even close. Lobotomized? Mm. Null goes zombified? Okay. Fishran, can you uh, find a council and jack in and figure out what's going on here? Mm. All right, time to get cracking, and not not literally cracking, but you know. Are you, are you sure it's not the, the squid with the multiple tentacles? Oh, possibly. Yes, release the kraken. Yeah. Cracker, <laughs> cracking like crackers. 
this where this game I love where this game goes. Okay. Uh, Insight plus engine Insight plus engineering Mr. Thashran, please. Okay. What's the difficulty? Uh, this is going to be difficulty of two. Uh, I need one, one more momentum. Okay. See, that's three successes. You get, get it back. you get that right back. It's not hard to find where the uh, communication s systems and subsystems are. It appears that there are actually two s communication systems within this structure. Probably one, one is probably for redundancy. Um, you are able to determine that this facility is inter is intercepting uh, Cardass Cardassian border frequencies. Uh, your um, a quick a quick glance over the uh, data on screen indicates uh, Cardassian fleet or Cardassian ship positions, uh, border and patrol ah pr bad, 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 patrol routines. Wolf Commander, it looks like we got a ton of information on uh, a lot of different Cardassian uh, ship positions. Can you possibly jerry-rig something that will, uh, in the redundant program, to track the information and send it to us so we can... Because our mission is to keep an eye on this station. Uh... So if we do something in the redundancy of it, uh, it might not be noticed as much. Uh, know what I mean? <laughs> sure. Okay. So it's not, you don't want, you want to actually jury rig considering we probably want it to stick around for a while. Right. <laughs> okay. I assume that's a control engineering task. Uh, yes, uh, control plus engineering, please. Okay, uh, how much uh, difficulty? difficulty? Oh, sorry, I got distracted. Uh, this is going to be a difficulty of three. Uh, no, sorry, he used the word jury rig, which means you're going to use daring plus engineering. Oh, no, no, I think, I think no, we're not... No, he's not going to use yeah. jury rig. Oh, uh... I want, because that's a temporary solution. That's why we were... <laughs> oh, <no>. I... <laughs> ah, it's a shame, I like... I like it when the Shran jury rigs things. Okay, difficulty three. I do too. <laughs> I uh, do too, yeah. but yeah, once he corrected me, I was like, oh, wait, no, no, yeah. no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sorry, yeah, I got distracted by something popping up on my third screen. Um, yep, so control engineering difficulty of three. And if you have communication systems, hacking, um, or stuff like that, that would be good. Vade mm -hmm. does and can Vade assist. Does. Evade could probably assist. Yeah, that would be a probably control plus engineering for Vade. Okay. Um, I'll I'll give you one threat so I can use my bold talent for this Ooh. bio die. Okay. <clears throat> and that's f four successes from the okay. Um Vade is not much help this time around. Probably got she probably got too distracted by uh. The Shran attempting to interlace metaphorical training inside the uh, <laughs> hacking. Uh, yes, because he tried to yes. kick it up a notch. Mm -hmm. oh. All right. Um, Falling over my head. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the Shran, you're able to determine, or you're able to place the requested a uh, uh, request. Blah, blah, blah. You are able to find and configure a communications uh, sub algorithm, and a, you're able to hide it in the redundant uh, in the redundant feed, so that hopefully it won't be f uh, easily detected. All right, all done here, Commander. We are a fly on their metaphorical wall. All right. Now, uh, go on. Larks go, sir. With these Zinkathy being mindless, what do we do about them not noticing that we were even here? Do you think they'll 
remember any of that? And we should I have also no idea. We should also make sure that we take care of any security footage on our way out. That we were never here. All right. Uh, let's do a scan and see if there's any sort of security measures that we'll know that we're here. Ooh, an interesting score. Uh, so this is going to be an... Uh, let's see. I mean, I've been rolling lots of insight, but this is still the best roll to use. So roll me... Uh, if, uh, whoever's doing it, roll me insight security, and one person can assist. And uh, this is... I'm going to spend a bit of difficulty to increase the difficulty to four... And increase the complication range 18 to 20. I've been trying to butt in for 10 minutes and yep. I realized my mic was unplugged. SMH. <laughs> uh, I thought y'all were just being rude and just ignoring me. I, Sorry, man. We try. <laughs> uh, it, so, so, actually, probably. Yeah, yeah I would say. Got... What I was going to say. I'm sorry, what were you going to say no. there, uh? Wolf dog? What I was going to say before we made this roll is that uh, before we actually sent the away team down, I did want the uh, the Nighthawk to jam any other outgoing transmission. Well, briefly, if uh, security picked up. Oh, okay. Keep that, in mind. that sounds like a half decent idea for the Nighthawk to do. Uh, so, who is currently on Nighthawk? That would be probably Rani. Uh, so, if someone could pick up Rani and roll me a uh, control plus engineering the ship can assist with uh, communications plus engineering and you get to decide whether it's a one two or three difficulty i'll go ahead and uh grab Rani, i guess control sure. engineering and we're rolling nice tonight why stop that difficulty three okay that's two from the nighthawk I'll spend one momentum for an extra die. Good God! That's uh, seven successes. So four more momentum, which is... Yeah, you're already capped. And I don't know how you're going to spend that floating momentum, so it's probably just going can, to go away. Oh, no, it's not, it's, not, two, it's not floating. Two, I just added that. Three, oh! Uh, the, sorry. The four takes you to the six. Ah, okay. Good plan. Uh, what were you saying there, Helsing? Oh, bloody momentum. Use that just to give us the advantage of taking care of our exfiltration, taking any notice of us at the security systems okay. on the station. Okay. So this is the interesting part because... So spend two momentum to get that advantage. So this is the interesting part, is that this building was rigged. Like, and I'm talking 360 degrees interior cameras. Um, this, this would get you James Cameron level of cinematic shots uh, with the security system in place here. Um, in fact, that appears to be what most of the data going out is, is video data of this structure. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Ow, ow, ow. As my antenna perk up, it hurts. <laughs> um, so, okay. have we erased ourselves? Is it possible to erase ourselves? Hmm. Figure out my metaphors. Uh, differ. Um... Difficult to do. It appears that most of the video data is... Well... There is a buffer period of approximately 10 minutes. You move fast enough that you would be able to scrub most of your... There were, It would still have some... In, there would still have your initial breach and stuff has been already transmitted out. So hopefully the Nighthawk has taken care of that part. Okay. Good, good, good. Is that what our 
two momentum advantage got us, yeah. or do we need to? That's what your okay, good. two momentum has Ooh. gotten you. So, sir, there's a little bit that we couldn't erase. Nighthawk's going to have to take care of it, but we need to move now. Yep. Let's get out of here. Okay. You all. And I want to make sure that we got like those brain scans so we can investigate that later. Okay, you're so leaving. Just... So you're leaving the Zinkethi behind. Yeah. Okay. You just fell asleep on the job. Mm -hmm. Yep. Rather all aggressively. Well, at the same time. <laughs> okay. So, uh, nope, that's that. You all pile back into the shuttle. And Miss Jackson looks... So, that's interesting. Miss Jackson, you are quite surprised to see everyone basically running back into the shuttle. All right, Lieutenant. Let's get out of here. Aye, aye, Commander. I trust exactly. everything with a eventful. Yes. We should go now. <laughs> All right, initiating sort of sequence. Okay. And detaching the umbilicals. Twenty minutes later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love a good SpongeBob meme. Okay. So you guys disem event uh, through a very um, lengthy but thorough. Uh, startup sequence, the USS Phantom begins its descent into the atmosphere is not the proper word. Gain elevation, I think, is the best term for it. And you make your way back to the ship. You are approximately 500 meters above the planet's surface when the USS Nighthawks, uh, Helsing, you're keeping an eye on things, Two ships decloak. There's Zinkethi. You're cloaked in the Badlands? Yes, they were. Interesting. Yes. Was wrong. Lieutenant, you said that we couldn't do that. It's. it's, it's, it's wrong. I doubt everything you've ever said now. <laughs> oh. I'm going to have to give you a science lecture. <laughs> well, you could fight about it later, boys and girls. A red alert, you get in position to protect the shuttle. <laughs> right, I got her notepad. Like, uh, metaphors and a science. Uh, well, Open the, docking bay doors were coming in hot. <laughs> to be fair, that is what Vade's intelligence report said, that Zinkethi should not be able to cloak in the Badlands. So, you know. Anyways, um, so what we're going to do is a stripped-down version of ship-to-ship -ship combat here. Um, which means that the good guys get to go first. How far out is the shuttle? Uh, shuttle is a prox. So, let's see, they've about 500 meters off the surface... They probably have approximately, I don't know, distance between Earth and Moon, which I think is, oh, well, maybe not. What is distance to high orbit? Isn't it like 2,300 miles or something? I mean, it's yeah, like it's several... 3,800,000 miles or something? Yeah, yeah several. Apparently, yeah. high Earth orbit is 35,000 kilometers, which is... Quite significant, actually. So that's approximately twenty-eight thousand miles, roughly, averaging things. So at warp, at warp six into the docking bay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, if she that's wants cool. to try it, she can try that. But you know, uh, so, uh, so who wants to do something first? So the ship could do some, Nighthawk could do something, the shuttle could do something. You could let me do something. You decloaked, so it's our turn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I basically, as soon as they decloak, 
I'm going to tell uh, Miss Jackson to punch it. <laughs> okay. Uh, daring plus contest, please. Uh, difficulty of two. Right. Yep. Jackson. Phantom. Jackson. Yep. I, I, I was looking at the Phantom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah, Phantom. Daring con. USS Phantom can assist with engines plus con. <sighs> yep. 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 Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That's one from that and two from Jackson. So one momentum for you guys. Uh, the USS Phantom streaks through the. Um, uh, uh, streaks through the void, making its way to the USS Nighthawk. You're not fully there, you're approximately halfway there, when one of the Shukdin class cruisers, it's its turn. And what it's going to do... Quick action, anybody? Uh, do you have it, Helsing? Oh, but of course. <clears throat> uh, I believe you can spend it during ship combat, so you can do something with the Nighthawk. Open fire, sir. Well, are they, uh... It's ship combat now, so I'd actually have to spend an action to see if they're charging up or not, right? Uh, I'll, I will give that for, to you for free. They do have weapons charged. Okay, then. Then, yes, we're gonna... Oh, we're, we're gonna... Got a return fire. Target the lead ship. Alright. Control security. And ship can assist with weapon security. I'm assuming you're firing phasers, which will be right. difficulty of two. I, I will say that you guys are at medium range. You can momentum. Okay. For a third die. That's four successes already. And who's got the ship? I just pulled it up. Weapons right. security. Hmm. A complication. That's fun. Okay. <clears throat> uh, you bring. F uh, so roll me some uh, challenge dice, please, for damage. And because you're firing phasers, you get to spend. You have basically two free momentum to deal with as you wish. So that could be two lesser resistances. Rolls. Add challenge dice. Reroll zeros, etc., etc. I will use. Um... The two floating to uh, lower resistance. Okay. So that is five successes. The Shook didn't have their scale four, which means that they do take some shield damage. So it buffers off their sh it buffers off one of their shields, uh, which I'm just going to assume you're targeting this one. So is that what Versatile Two did? Um, yeah, so versatile two you would mean that you can spend one moment. You basically get two momentum to spend okay. how you want. So if you spend both to strip their defenses away, then they're less they're stripped by four. Um, and I forgot area spread. We haven't done shipboard combat in forever. Yeah, I have forgotten what those two do too. I think it's something that you need to specify before you actually roll the dice. So we do. We do. I'll keep that in mind next yeah. time. Fair enough. Okay, so as uh, in Kathy ships are here. So what can they do? It's been a while since I've done these two. Okay. Okay, so that one is lessened by four. Not enough to take. Oh no, that's lesser by five. Okay. So, what this one does is this is interesting is that instead of shooting at either the USS Nighthawk or the shuttle, it's going to target its installation and fires. And I am going to spend some threat to add a couple dice to the crew. That is definitely enough to hit. I get to roll me some challenge dice, which is seven of the damn things. 
Heck, it only took th it would only take three to wipe it off the map. But for the sake of it, yeah. Even with that roll, uh, it lets loose a shot a beam of uh, tetrion radiation or tetrion beams right to the planet's surface or the moon's surface, and it detonates the structure right behind the sh uh, fleeing shuttle. Nighthawk is gone. The USS Phantom has gone. And now it's the other sh the other ship's turn. <clears throat> and it is going to attempt to shoot at the shuttlecraft. What scale would you say these ships are at? Uh, four. They're four, and you are uh, scaled two. But you do have small craft, which means that difficulty to hit you is actually a three instead of a two. Uh, whoops, that's the wrong button. That's this one. Okay, uh, so you are in luck. As Miss Jackson sees it, sees the beam coming and deftly swerves the ship or the shuttle out of the way. Uh, however, it is now the time for the complication for the USS Nighthawk's weapons to take effect. As the sudden power up or the sudden amount of weapons fire in this area have attracted a plasma strike that is going to head towards the Nighthawk. So I need a daring plus contest from Mr. Jefferson, please. And the ship can now because the ship the ship's sensors have already been programmed to detect these, that lowers the difficulty by one, but it's still going to be a difficulty two roll. Um so if Mr. Jefferson could please roll me Daring plus Con, the ship can assist with Engine plus Con. Nobody else wants to. I can go ahead and uh, grab Jefferson. Uh, that's the Phantom's roll there, Helsing, not the Nighthawks. Oops. I mean, they still got a success, so I'll count that as a success. So that's one success from the Nighthawk. And from Mr. Jefferson. That's the other. You get one more success, which is the one you need. By sheer luck, or by pure skill, depending on who decides to uh, review the action in the after action report, Jefferson sees the plasma stream of the Badlands streaking towards the ship. And deftly puts it into an evasion bank. Okay. Now, next up. So, we haven't fully reset yet, so... Um, actions of the same station will, of course, cause... Let's just do it this way, because I think it's easy. It's better for me to manage it this way. One, two... One, two, four. So you have four, five actions total. Tactical's gone. From here you have two actions. Uh, helm is gone. There are four actions here. They've already lost their tactical. And one, two, three. There. So, um, bad guys... Well, People who are not Starfleet get to go, unless you want to spend a momentum to keep, um, you know, keep control. Now, the shuttle can still shoot. Yep, shuttle can still shoot. It could also do another uh, contest. Its difficulty just increases by one. And for what environmental factor is that difficulty increasing? Um... So difficulty increasing would typically have been sensors, but thanks to VAID, um, you don't really need to worry about that at close range. If the shuttle already did a con, yeah. if they do another con, an additional difficulty level, yeah. would that get them into the Nighthawk? Um, 
Sorry, what was that for the Nighthawk? Shuttle does one more con action. Does that get them it will, into yes. the Nighthawk? It will, yes. That might be worth a cap. And then we could do our con action to beat feet. Another yeah, that's what, I, that's what I was thinking. So we'll go ahead and uh, charge straight to the Nighthawk shuttle bay. Okay. Daring plus con. Difficulty of three. And the shuttle, or the Amazon runabout, or the blah, 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 the Phantom can assist with engines plus con. <clears throat> yeah, no luck from the Phantom. What does Miss... Ch so the two successes will get you in the vicinity of the Nighthawk, but you're at the very last second a... Pla um, a bulk of super dense plasma just rumbles right across the bow, knocking the, knocking you off a final approach. You'll have to either do something a bit more drastic next turn, or the sh so the shuttle will need to do another action to dock in, or the USS Nighthawk is going to have to get creative. Well, the. Uh... Will we knock off shields off the uh, off the phantom for that for the plasma strikes? Mm, no, I'm not going to do it that way. It's just buffeted by a nasty crosswind. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so that's gone, and now it is one of the cruisers. So the one that you hit, the one that actually has taken damage, is going to attempt to shoot at the USS Nighthawk. And what it is going to do... Uh, no, sorry. What it's going to do instead is scan for weakness. So what it's going to do... The Shran, you would say our biscuits are burning? <laughs> our, oh. our goose is uh, getting cooked. cooked. Pay no attention to that system hit. I once again pushed the wrong button. Unless you actually want to take engine damage, because we can do that too. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> no. Uh, the good news is, is that it does not succeed in the scan for weakness task. So that's its turn. And now, uh, USS Nighthawk, what do you wish to do? Track your beams! Track your beams! No, give me that turn. Tractor beams there and or emergency transport and just get them out. But I want my shuttle, so we're just going to tractor beam it. Okay. Um, roll me. That's a good question. I don't think I've ever used tractor beams in this setting. Um, yeah, we we did early on, and that was it. It was like one of Helson's first rolls, and he screwed. <laughs> oh, but Helson's already gone. Yeah. So let's see. Previous tractor beams are. Somewhere in here. Um, let's just roll. So if Helsing's doing a tractor beam roll, that is going to be an increase difficulty because it is a tactical roll. And this is going to be a um, control security. Yeah, here we are. Yeah. So uh, control security from Helsing. The ship can assist with structure security. This is going to be a difficulty three. Um, give me one of the momentums. Control security. And. That's three, the three successes you need. Ship. And what's the ship roll? The weapon. Uh, structure security. Structure security. Structure security. Oh, I keep forgetting that that's also a. Security. Tech. Okay, so that is a grand total of five successes. So you get two momentum. Got him, sir. Good to know. Good to know. Okay, and that's that turn. So, sensing what's about to happen, the other ship is going to attempt to. Uh, you know what? Just because I think it's amusing, and because you were so generous with threat. It's going to do a targeted attack on your engines. 
and I will spend some threat to add to the dice pool here. Uh, this will be a difficulty of four tasks because of how this is being done. And that is enough. Neat. I got a... <laughs> I got um, two critical successes and one critical failure. So this will be fun. Especially since we figured out that they don't negate each other. <laughs> yes. Yes, indeed. Now, so I will roll me... Uh, seven piercing oh this oh this has the versatile quality i forgot about that and the piercing quality ooh i'd forgotten about both of those abilities <laughs> challenge dice seven okay so you know i'm just going to spend one threat to reduce your resistances by two so that means that you have a resistance of 3. Uh, that is a grand total of 11 points of damage. Which is 8. Uh, let's see. A s yeah, so if that is... 11 points minus 3 from your remaining resistance is 8. Targeted to the engines means that you take 2 breaches to your engines. And how many shields do we lose? I am... Um, so you would lose a grand total of seven. Nope, you'd lose eight shields. <clears throat> and with an engine, each breach to engines, we lose how much power? I believe you'd lose two per. I'm just checking that myself because this is... I am forcing myself to relearn a lot of these rules. Because we are not a combat-heavy game here. But we excel in speeches. Yes. Yes, we do. Okay, so system hit table. Metaphors. Uh, let's see here. Communications. Uh, let's see. Engines. So, you suffer one or more breaches, so you lose a uh, grand total of four power. And you, someone in engineering needs to perform the restore minor action. And any tasks ass assisted by the ship's engines or have a power requirement increase in both difficulty and complication range by one. And, and I think we should still have an engineer task. Uh, yes, you do. Um, so, uh, sadly, Thashran is still on board the shuttle getting off, so Thashran can't assist in this. So we're going to have to break out the engineering support characters. Uh, which I believe is Kassat primarily, and I'm pretty sure there's at least another engineering character. If not, we'll have to make some. Notice there's a few. Yeah, uh, Rani is yeah, in operation. Rani's on the bridge. <clears throat> let's see. Engineering, we have a few. So let's see, we have Transporter Chief, Zell. Uh, we have someone named... Oh, we have a Cardassian named Temgorg who I don't think has ever been used until now. We also have someone named uh, Huzi Dion, uh, Trill. So yeah, either those individuals... Did you say Celine Dion? Yes. Well. Yes, I did. <laughs> Canadian! Cassatt well, <laughs> has... Um propulsion system, so, I mean, clearly making repairs on engines is his, his wheelhouse. Yep. Okay. Uh, so, if Mr. Cassatt could please roll me a, uh, I believe it is a daring plus engineering task with a difficulty of one? Where's the repair minor action? Restore minor action. Uh, let's see damage control uh, let's see officer sends a damage control team which we're not doing at the moment 
Let's see. Ah, restore. Character performs minor repairs and adjacent. Da -da 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 -da. Doesn't actually tell me what it is, but yeah. Either way, three successes is probably enough. Uh, Kassat reports that. So, as a minor action, uh, the Nighthawks engines are functioning at, let's say, 80% power. So, you lose one of the breaches? Um, I don't believe you lose any of the breaches right now. Those require okay. actual time at a starbase to properly fix. Oh, gotcha. But you're, they're usable. Uh, so, that's uh, the USS Nighthawk's minor. Does the USS Nighthawk want to get the hell out of here? No, sorry. USS Nighthawk actually took its major to pull them on board. So, yeah. Would a uh, transport action also be major? I'm trying to remind myself. Um, you have them right on board. Now, but... Yeah. You have them no, on board. I know. No, no, no. I, I know. Oh. I, I want to do something daring. Um, yes. That would probably be a minor action. And unless you have an ability to grant you a second minor action during your turn, we'll have to wait until your next one. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Oh, by the way, um, be they also got a complication. So what should that complication be? Cascade reaction, reaction in their uh, warp drives when they explode. Let's do something a little less minor, a little more minor to that, please. Otherwise, I could give you the same. <laughs> All the toilets backflow. Let's go somewhere in between the two, shall we? <laughs> Let's... Have you seen what they look like? Imagine what their toilets would be like. Maybe they're just so bloody efficient they don't have to go. But anyways, uh, let's just say for the sake of argument that their sensors... No, their, uh, weapons over... their weapons emitters overheat. And they go down, so they'll have to spend a restore action in order to actually get them operational again. Anyways. I approve. I believe that brings me to the end of this uh, series of actions. So, oh no, they still have two actions left. Uh, Nighthawk, your turn. And I think we have a helm action on the Nighthawk. You do, yes. <clears throat> we do, but I don't quite feel like leaving yet, or attempting to leave. Oh. I want... I'd like to uh, use our advanced transporters and see if we could transport whoever is on the bridge of the lead ship and take them hostage. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah, Zelda so... That exact, does she? Uh, sorry, what was that there, Helsing? Well, doesn't have to be that exact with actually bringing them on board, does she? No, she does not. Um, still, it's going to be a difficulty... Let's see. Advanced transporters beaming through shields. This is still going to be a difficulty four task to beam them to the transporter pad. I am okay with that. And okay. I'd like to... Well, let me go pull up Zell and uh, spend a momentum for an extra die here. Okay. And I'd like to spend a point of determination as well. Okay, so, like so your determination and then two momentum? Yeah, my okay. determination, two momentum, and uh, hopefully that's all we need for now. Okay. Uh, <laughs> if, if, if not, then we'll call upon other talents. <laughs> Control engineering for Zell, sensors engineering for the ship. And you need four successes. Nothing from the Nighthawk. Control engineering. So I'm rolling 4d20, right? Uh, yeah. No, you're rolling 3d20, unless no, you've... 3d20, sorry. Yeah, 3d20. Um, say what? Uh, 3d20, unless you bought extra di more extra dice, but I think you just bought that. So, yeah. yeah. 3d20, applicable focus. And that is a grand total of six successes. Okay. And we get one momentum for high resolution sensors. Not that you need it. Well, but we're yes. in combat. Never mind. Yeah, you're in combat, so that doesn't help. Okay. So we're going to cut quickly to the transporter room because this is fun. So, Chief Zell is in the transporter room. 
Uh, she follows the captain's orders, and all of a sudden, there is a very sh sh ah, very uh, surprised-looking Zenkethi captain and two other in two other Zenkethis. Uh, they don't. They are unarmed, and they are beginning to pound on the force field that is currently surrounding the transporter bay. Well, security to transporter room four, three. And I'd like to uh, comms in and uh, talk to them over the com over the uh, intercom, clearly. Okay. So, attention unidentified Zenkethi captain. <laughs> well, as you can see, we've currently have taken you hostage. If you don't want any further actions to be mm -hmm. taken upon your two ships out here in the Badlands... You must order your vessels to stand down. I will agree to a peaceful n discussion as long as these hostilities cease. You have 10 seconds to comply. Uh, roll me a presence plus command test. Uh, intimidate, please. Uh, intimidation or interrogation, anything like that would be a good focus here. And it is going to be opposed by its... Presence plus command. Just when I thought you guys were done with them, I closed off their sheets and moved to ship <laughs> combat, but now I have to open them again. Uh... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh... Now, I don't <laughs> I don't have um, intimidation, but I mean, I will spend that momentum to get another, another die. And... Uh... Okay. I have... Um, I have bargain. Would you would you consider this a social conflict or no? Uh, this is definitely a social I mean, conflict. Mm -hmm. So, if I was negotiating an offer with somebody, I have the ability to roll a d20 on my next persuade test to convince that person. Well, that considering you only need one success to apparently convince him, go for it. <laughs> I I shall. So I mean, I guess that's my extra die right there. So that's four d20. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Okay, I'm just throwing it all out here today. Watch me fail. Well, you did get a crit failure, so uh, you succeed. Well, uh, the, I'm sorry, I have to... Am I reading this talent right? No, I'm not. Okay. On my next... I may re-roll a d20. Uh, I, I may re-roll, so it's not actually four. It's three. Uh, okay. But um, so, I could re-roll that one of those zeros, potentially. Sure. So I'll just count those first three results and drop the last zero, but that's still... So yeah, feel free to re-roll that complication. Thank you. Presence command, 1d20. And that's three successes, so uh, you get three momentum. Not that you need it, but you get it back to six. <clears throat> um, you... Uh, you start the countdown from 10 down to 0. You get to 2 when the Zenkethi finally says, Hail my ship. We shall, I shall transmit orders to surrender. A wise decision. Channel open. Speak carefully. I've never actually came up with names for these guys. Captain, this is this is Captain Th Theramal Fell A slash B B. Stand down. Cease combat functions. And uh, Mr. Helsing, you realize uh, you follow up on ah on your console. Uh, the both uh, Zenkethi ships. Power down their weapons. Power down, sir. All right, that's good to hear. Do we have the ability to go to warp, or at least navigate out of the Badlands? We still have some power left, yes, sir. I think we're down to five. If I was tracking it right. Would uh, that yep. be adequate enough to outrun these Zenkethi vessels? Tactical analysis. Uh, this is uh, going to be a insight plus contest, because uh, starship identification or something along those lines would be useful here. Difficulty of three. 
Uh, let's say difficulty two, because you've encountered these ships before. They're still in sight? Uh, yeah, insight. Uh, no, reason plus con. Let's do that. Right. Eat my best. But, um, let me get two extra dice. All right. Oh, that's the brig, not the bridge. There we go. You know where it gets even better is... I don't have one to play. Shipboard tactical systems? No, not in this instance. Well, the closest I have. Covert ops? Nope. No focus. And yet you still somehow manage to get a critical. That's just how this game's going. Yeah, so that's one momentum right back. Uh, so the Shukdin cruisers are more than a match for the USS Nighthawk's uh, top speed in open space, just because the top speed of the Nighthawk is about 8.5, and Shukdin cruisers estimated to be about 9, 9, 3, something along those lines. However, because you are in the Badlands which sort of limits the power usage before, you know, attracting impending lightning strikes. Um, yeah, the problem is that even in here, they probably can still keep up with you. All right, then. Well, I had to know. Otherwise, I was just going to take them and run. But if that's the case, then we'll actually agree to the sit-down talks. All right. Or at least try to get information one way. Maybe not necessarily provide it the other. We'll see. <laughs> okay, so... And you're doing I... this with them still at... Pointing you... Still at a stalemate? Uh, I'd like to send... What's our, what's our fastest small, uh, small craft? Uh, what cape? Not, you know... Yeah. Uh, the uh, sector. It's... Probably the uh, Phantom. Right. Oh, the Type XX? No, that's more for short range infiltration stuff. If you want long range stuff, that's the shuttle. That's the Phantom. And the Phantom is Amazon class, right? Yep. The yep. one that everybody was on for Shuttle gotcha. Bay. I'd like some of the crew that's already on the Phantom. You know, let's let's get Bashir and some of the security officers back here, but I'd like Loxley to remain. Okay. And maybe a few of the security officers that were there. And I'd like them to lead the Badlands. Oh. And I'd like them to um, go on their own mission and see if we could then contact either Stifleet Intelligence or just ask for you know additional assistance to our location okay maybe deep space nine that would probably I mean, be... as long as, yeah as long as we're here on this standoff i want to make sure that we, we i want to make sure that eventually we'll be able to maintain a tactical advantage here so i'd Understood. like them to get going okay so miss jackson um one of the security officers and let's send one of the engineers that's not the shran okay I'll just move tokens around here. Uh, Thashran, you m make your way down to engineering to find that Lieutenant Cassatt has managed to repair the, d or at least restore the damage in the most, or restore functionality in the most efficient way possible. It may not be your preferred method because duct tape isn't hanging from the ceiling, but he's done it. He's done a good job. Not bad. I'm sure, I would have done it more fabulously, but this is uh, acceptable, I, I suppose. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I'm just getting characters moved on the runabout just to make sure that they are not on the ship anymore. Okay. Um, Commander Bashir, you and Vaid return to the bridge. Nice to see you back, Commander. That goes for the rest of you as well. In any case, we got people to talk to. Meet me in Transporter Room 3. 
Okay, I'm assuming... Bashir... Uh, Bashir, Helsing, and Singral are going. Anyone else going? And um, yeah, the owner, when they called for security to go to the transporter room, he was beating okay. feet there, so he'll probably be in there. Makes sense. Uh, so, as I have the minis right now, that means that Lieutenant Vayet is in, has the con. All right. Or do you want to leave Helsing up in there on the, on the tactical? Because Loxley's on the shuttle. It's either Helsing, Loxley, or Yaz for your tactical officers. Yeah, no, we'll keep, um, we'll keep Helsing on the bridge. Uh, I'll go with Bashir to transport a room three myself with a lot, along with the rest of our security officers, and the rest of you can remain on the bridge. Okay. Slash That'll be Yaz and Hanora. Gotcha. Okay, once again, we are down to transporter room two. Which looks very similar to Transporter Room 1. It's like they use the same set piece or something. No, that can't be it. No, it can't be. Okay, so we have them, we have Hanara, and Yaz. <clears throat> nope, wrong one. Right one. Alright. Uh, the commanders, or the command staff, will come in to find both Yas and Hanara. Uh, phasers drawn, pointing at the Transporter Room. Or at the transporter pad, there are three Zenkethi currently sitting down. And uh, because of how their anatomy works, their legs actually physically wrap around their lower body. As a, uh, and they sort of uh, sit on their rump, perfectly balanced as all things should be. <laughs> all right. Well, I'll go ahead and step in and make myself known. Well. Here we are, gentlemen. I understand this is a very testy situation right now, and it's uncomfortable for all of us. But I am true to my word, and I will comply. I am the captain. Right now, I am Captain Sengrel of the Federation Starship Nighthawk. The Badlands are no, relatively neutral space. And you, you decloaking and powering up your phases, I consider that an immediate attack. Why are you here in the Badlands? Why did you... And why are you threatening my vessel? We are operating under orders from our from the Autocree. Can you be a little bit more specific? Did your orders tell you that we were going to be here? Our orders and and our orders told us that Starfleet was going that if we were to watch this our orders were to watch this facility for Starfleet presence. We were then to record everything, including a, including our heroic defeat of the Starfleet trespassers. So you were ordered to basically, essentially, ambush any Starfleet that would actually come out here into the Badlands. Yes. Oh, that's not that's not very nice of you. Some might necessarily consider that incredibly aggressive, and so, or an act of war. Some would consider an act. Some would consider beaming or opening fire on uh, Zenkethi personnel an act of war too, Captain. Well, that may or may not be true, but I suppose that's up to us to determine exactly where where that uh, where that line of thinking begins and ends. Tell me here, Captain, now that we're being able to talk face-to-face, -face, what exactly do you think is supposed to happen next? By this point, my ship will stay and ensure, with its, will stay to ensure that you will, will stay to monitor the situation, and in the hopes that you will act as the Federation typically does, and will return this hostage, us, once these negotiations are complete. The other, our sister ship, is probably already making moves to depart with the footage that it has recorded. Therefore, completing the mission, or at least as many, um, completing as much of the mission as is currently salvageable. 
Well, that is a very interesting sequence of events that you have there. But I need to ask, if you wanted to monitor this space for Starfleet activity, why did you destroy your own station with your people already still inside? Those people were class... were sec E slash EE, the lowest of our society. They volunteered for this for enhancement to serve their to serve the um, to serve the Zenkethi Alliance one final time so that those that those that share ah, those that share their sect could potentially be could move to a higher role within our society wow. and I'll, I'll interrupt at this point the Helsing uh, true to his predictions, one of the Zenkethi ships breaks off and moves to depart the Badlands, heading back towards Zenkethi space. Second Zenkethi ship is breaking off, sir. And she's warped. Well, wait until... Wait until she is a good enough distance away from the Nighthawk. Then... Is it pot? Well, okay, GM. Mm -hmm. Is it possible for us to actually ignite the plasma storms in such a way that it will destroy, uh, or at least heavily cripple the Zakethi ship that's attempting to flee? If you were to say spend some advantage uh, to create a plasma strike, and were to say, I don't know time a photon torpedo or something to go off at roughly the same time, that might be sufficient. I would like to do all of those things. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> okay, so spend two momentum to create the advantage. And if Mr. Helsing could please roll a control plus security. Uh, difficulty of three. And because this is a torpedo, you're actually technically giving me threat. But the adventure's nearly over, so it doesn't really matter. But I like uh, threat. Been, I'll use uh, one momentum for a third die. Okay. Uh, ship can assist with weapon security. Ooh. Okay, so that is two successes from Helsing. One complication. And what does the ship get? Well, there's the one that you need. <clears throat> Uh, Helsing, uh, you decide to take a, a small video recording of this just for your personal uh, best of reel. Um, working with Vaid to generate the plasma strike, uh, it, ro it rocks the uh, Shukdin cruiser. Just at the same point, your torpedo detonates al along its uh, ventral side. Ca so its shields go down due to the strike, and your torpedo finishes the job. <clears throat> so you see, Captain, your, your sequence of events is not what's going to come to pass. Let me tell you what's going to happen. All of us, my ship, your, your ship, and the rest of the crew from your other from the other will all be will all leave the badlands together after which the nighthawk will escort you to the nearest federation starbase as soon as we have a clear signal you will have the ability to contact your government to send adequate diplomatic representation I don't wish this to become an incident, but at the same time, I must look out for my own safety, and I, in and I intend to do so. To the fullest extent of that my ship can provide. Uh, the Zenkethi's, uh, uh, you notice all three of the Zenkethi skin ripple uh, as bioelectricity um, surges across it in complicated patterns. You know this is a form of um, uh, a form of very basic communication that's used between them. 
the con the quote unquote light show lasts approximately five seconds. We I accept your terms. I'm glad that you see it that way. Wait here for further instructions. I'll then allow you to contact the rest of your ships and we'll all go about our way. I understand this is a difficult for any man. I applaud you for being able to see reason. And then I'll exit the, the transporter room. And at, at that point, while he was doing those final words, I want to have a word with Vaid real quick on the bridge. Sure. What do you guys wish to chat about on the bridge? Lieutenant, were you able to complete those scans? The, the, both those in, those in, um, into, into, I'm, I'm lost for words. The, <laughs> Your security scans. Oh yes, those are taken care of. I'd like to run, run, run a sweep, especially in transporter room three. All right. Uh, roll me insight plus science difficulty of two, please. And the ship can assist with sensor science or sensors medicine, whichever. Are we still in... You're not in combat, no. So that's... I'm not becoming that obvious. <laughs> okay, that's the two successes you need. Uh, and yeah, a momentum. Oh yes, right, from the ship sensor stuff. So, good news is that... Or bad news, depending on how you wish to you know, flavor it. They are from this universe. <clears throat> right. Mm-hmm. A little bit at ease. Well, I mean, you know. Anything you wish to ask, Miss Science Officer? Uh, are there any remnants of, like, I... Mm. You want to scan the debris, too? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, you find no... You find no indication of mirror life forms from any of the Zenkethi or Federation ships. Alright. We're just doing with ourselves. Okay. So it's about this time that the captain and the commander return back to the bridge. Assuming that's where you guys are going. Uh, that is indeed where I would be going. And once I return, I'd like to, I'd like to uh, tell the other vessel and uh, start communicating, you know, the terms that their captain has already agreed to. And then I would like the Nighthawk to track to the Zenkethi vessel out of the Badlands. Okay. Or hopefully, at this point in time, we'd be met by other Federation starships. That's... If the, uh, you know, if the Phantom... Yes. Got, got you. Uh, you are met by um, exiting the Badlands. So, you, know, you exit the Badlands and are met by the USS Defiant. And it is currently in command by, uh, let's see, ah yes. Commander Molly O'Brien is taking, has the Defiant, and I don't have a token for it, but, you know. Uh, and so we have the Nighthawk pulling a Shukdin cruiser. The Nighthawk is here, and so is the Amazon shuttle. Uh, the USS Defiant hails, and Commander O'Brien, with a bemused expression on her face, congratulates you for finding Zin the Zinkethi needle in the Badlands haystack. Well, I appreciate that, Commander. It was certainly uh, an interesting sequence of events that we have here. Not exactly the cleanest of missions, but hopefully we'll be able to get to an area where everybody has the answers to their questions. That is my hope, too. 
we have plenty of uh, detainment space on Deep Space Nine. Why don't we take all the Zenkethi over there? We can lock them up, and you can join me for a pint. That's tempting offer, but uh, I'm afraid I have other reports to get to and a bunch of data to collate. But I will take you up on that offer and taking the Zenkethi off my hands. Very well. Uh, plot. Follow follow us home, Nighthawk. We'll go at a safe speed for your engines. <laughs> Appreciate it. Nighthawk out. <laughs> and with that, the USS Defiant goes to warp at a very stable warp six. And that will end the episode. Unless there's any th small scenes anyone likes to do. Oh yes, I have one. Um, because I find it amusing. Uh, we are going to be in... So... We are in... Uh, so, it is the evening. Uh, you guys are still en route to Deep Space Nine. Uh, Lieutenant Vaid, you are in your quarters when there is a chime at the door. Hello? Come on in. It is uh, Lieutenant Commander Thashran, and he's carrying a portable data pad. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad uh, now that all that's on the over, now we can get to the important stuff. See, I noticed all these, these issues you were having uh, during the mission, so I've uh, whipped up this in, this uh, presentation for you. Um, and don't worry, I've, I've had it uh, previewed and ran about people, and it, it's it's great. All right, so just uh, to settle in, I don't know if you need some popcorn or something. Uh, this is this is going to take a little bit of time, not too long, just just over a little bit over an hour. But uh, yeah, don't worry, we'll just get, we'll get through this, and you, you'll you'll learn. An hour. <laughs> I know it's, it's it's a pretty short amount of time to get through all the material, but I, I think I did a pretty good job of um, being fairly brief uh, brief in it. Uh, Don't worry, it, it, I think it'll be sufficient um, for you to learn. And and if it's not, then I can always come up with another uh, presentation afterwards. And we finish with a beauty shot as of the ship, where in space you can hear Vaid scream. Uh, and on that note, we'll Ooh. end the session. So, ah, thank you to everyone. Thank you to all my players for playing. Thank you to all my watchers for watching. And we will be back next week to see where how far this rabbit hole goes. Until next time, bye-bye. <laughs>